So you want to be an astrophysicist. All right, all right, fair enough. You know, I suppose there are some people that want that kind of job. And I gotta tell you though, it's not the most, it's not the most enriching career. That's that's one way to put it, to be fair. Uh, and I get a lot of questions from high school students, middle school students, even younger kids who love astronomy, love physics, and think they want to, they want to go into this job. And they're kind of stressed out because they're worried that it's not going to, that they're going to make a wrong choice, that they're going to make a wrong move, a wrong decision. They're not going to take the right class. They're not going to read the right book. They're not going to go to the right college and, and that'll be it. And then they'll be done and they won't be able to, to have a career in the sciences, let alone like physics or astronomy. And uh, I always tell them what my career trajectory was like, which is basically I had no idea what I was doing at any point, and yet I, I somehow got to where I wanted to be. But I discovered where I wanted to be as I went along. Like as a kid, I was always reading science books. I was always reading uh, books about astronomy, books about dinosaurs. And then as I got older, I would get more technical books. Uh, two books that, that stick out to me that I read in high school. One was The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene. And the other was Godel Escher Bach by Douglas Hofstetter. And... So I'd always loved these books at, at a very high level, but for some reason that I honestly have never been able to figure out. Uh, now that now that I have enough self-awareness to think back to when I was a teenager and try to uncover what I was thinking, and I never realized that being a scientist was a job, at least a job for me. It was just something that I don't know, like I knew about string theory and dark energy and, and high energy particle physics, all the, all the juicy bits and general relativity and black holes, all, all the good stuff. But I never like realized that this is an actual thing that people do, that this is an actual career that people actually are at the forefront. It's just, and, it, and maybe it just wasn't for me. Maybe there was uh, like some feelings of inadequacy that I had. I don't know. So I went into college as a computer science major. I was a computer geek growing up too, loved to program. Uh, that wasn't too fulfilling. And I was just kind of going through the motions, taking the classes and then third year of college, I took an astronomy elective because I'd always loved astronomy. I remember the teacher, Dr. John Poling. I remember the class. I remember I remember it clicking. I remember it feeling right, like connecting something that I'd always an interest in, uh, astronomy, with the actual technical stuff. I was really getting a feel for it. I was really enjoying it. And I remember speaking to the professor a lot. Uh, and and you know, he mentioned that you know, you can you can this is a job that people do. Is is this a job in the sciences? And I thought, okay. I remember, I remember distinctly waking up one morning, just, I'm going to be a physicist. Boom. Like the, like the thought popped in my head. I could not get it out. By the end of the week, I switched majors, not really knowing what a bachelor's in physics was going to entail. And, uh, and then I ended up as I uh, approached bachelor's, I had a bunch of options, decided to go into grad school. Not really, again, not really knowing what I was going to do with a PhD in physics, but I was going to go for a PhD in physics. And after I got my PhD, I had an opportunity to get a research position, another research position. Now I'm in a, 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 a staff position. A, a, I'm in a position, a, a somewhat permanent position at a university, which is pretty great. And uh, it's, it's interesting that at no stage... It wasn't like I was second year of college. I said, this is what I'm going to do. And at no, it wasn't like a high schooler said, yes, I want to be an astrophysicist. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to check all these boxes and become an astrophysicist. Just the whole time, it was a matter of this career feels right. These choices feel right. I'm motivated and interested to, to work through the hard stuff. And, and so that's what I'm going to do. That's the direction I'm going to. A push in. And at every stage, if it didn't feel right, then I wouldn't go for it. Uh, just like I switched from computer science to physics, because computer science, well, 
all my love to all the computer scientists out there, just wasn't feeling right for me, but physics was. And so that's what I try, I tell that story because I, I want to impress upon middle schoolers and high schoolers and, and people even in college that it's never too late to change your mind. That you, it's not like there's a list of criteria that you must complete in order to become an astrophysicist. Human experience, human lives, human career trajectories are much more fluid. They're much more organic. They're much more surprising, serendipitous. You never know what you're going to see or what you're going to learn, what's, what's going to excite you, what's going to demotivate you. And so it's just a matter of just, of just going with it, of taking what feels right and pushing in those directions. And, and, and if you like what you're doing, then, then do your best to do more of it. And so that's the advice. You know, I get a lot of questions about, about skills, about what are the right colleges, about, uh, you know, how much money do I need to get a degree? Uh, what books should I be reading now? And if, if I look back, uh, when I got my PhD in physics in 2011, uh, if I compare what I know now, just about physics and astronomy, to what I knew in 2011, or if I compare what I knew in 2011 to what I knew in 2005 when I get my, got my bachelor's, or 2005 to 2000 when I, when I graduated high school, each step, if I looked back at the previous half decade, I would be frightened by how much I knew just the sheer volume of knowledge. And I think that's what makes people excited, but makes people also nervous about pursuing a, a career in physics or astronomy or the sciences in general is just the body of knowledge is so massive. And it feels like there's so much stuff that you have to know and to learn and to understand to begin making progress in the field. And that if you're a middle schooler or high schooler, you're looking at this giant field with, with, with black holes and galaxies and cosmological evolution and thermodynamics and quantum mechanics and, and the whole deal. And it's like, it's overwhelming. And I try, I, I try to communicate how you know, what I know now is the result of like 15 years of professional work, right? Of, of starting in college and saying, okay, now I'm going to be a physicist, so now I'm going to take classes. So it didn't all come at once. It wasn't like an avalanche of knowledge. It was one test at a time. It was one exam at a time. It was one page in a book at a time. It was one conversation with a teacher or an advisor at a time. It was one video at a time. It was, it was one equation at a time, one sentence, one word at a time where you read and go, ah, and a little brick moves into place. And then before you know it, you have this massive wall of knowledge. And the PhD didn't come at once. The bachelor's didn't come at once. The, my my pro current professional position didn't come all at once. It took, it took months of dedication, months of work, months of study. And you don't need the mountain of knowledge to come in. No one expects you to know all there is to know about physics and astronomy coming in. That's the point of getting a degree. That's the point of getting a graduate degree. That's the point of, of training under a mentor or an advisor is so that you learn things piece by piece. So you slowly over time build up these bricks and it's not as daunting as it seems. Looking back, it's, I'm like, oh wow, I, I actually do know a bunch. I, like I learned a bunch. And that's pretty cool to know all this stuff. And, and I have fun sharing it with, with whoever will listen, honestly. But, and if I compared to me and Sway when I graduated high school in 2000, I'm just like, there's no way that stuff could fit in my brain. But it didn't fit all at once. It happened piece by piece. And so, yes, getting a PhD, going into career, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, it is difficult. It's not an easy career, it's not an easy job, um, but it's a fun job, it's a rewarding job. It's, it's a pretty cool thing to be at the forefront of research and to learn brand new things that nobody else learned before. But the, 
the development to go from a high schooler to a you know a professional physicist or professional astronomer is it's a very slow process it's a very slow process and a long process and it's designed to be that way because yes there is a lot of knowledge to be learned that you need to acquire and skills you need to develop but everyone knows that and so everyone's willing to to take your time so the the path to becoming a scientist is a long one and it is a difficult one but it's not an impossible one it's not a it's not a giant mountain it's it's a long it's a long road it's there you go that's the best metaphor i can think of if you like this video, please click that like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and also, I can hang out in the comments if you want. Ask me some follow-up questions. Happy to answer those. And please, if you like what I do, go to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash pmsutter. Uh, that is, and there's links down there. There's links around my head or somewhere. That is how I do all my education and outreach. Thanks a lot.